Welcome to Powered by Her, exploring the stories of how area women power their business. Hear from the growing network of female entrepreneurs of the Upper Cumberland with your host, Tiffany Anton, director at the Biz Foundry. Powered by Her starts now. Hello, you're listening to Powered by Her in the Hints and Oakley Podcast Center. I'm Tiffany Anton with the Biz Foundry here in Cookville, Tennessee. And today we have Laura Holloway on from the Storyteller Agency, and I'm very excited to kind of talk about her journey. So welcome, Laura. Welcome to you as well. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Thank you for being here. So the Storyteller Agency is what? Oh, God, that's a that's a really big question to start off with. Tell me your story, lady. Uh, It's a business that I started almost five years ago, and it is the child of a, a decades long career in film and television and marketing and journalism and it all kind of combined into this one business where we help businesses tell their story and it's through creative storyteller marketing which is a concept that's kind of come about in the past 10 years um 15 years but it's it's really taken focus here um uh, in the last five or six years and uh it's just something that i have always been really interested in and started a business about it so let's back up what made you want to start a business in the first place um, being tired of working for other people, knowing that I could do it better. I mean, the reason, <laughs> all the reasons that you start your own business, um, I shouldn't say knowing I could do it better, thinking I could do it better. Um, I had worked with some really great people in the past and we, um, I actually, we moved from Phoenix to Florida in 2014. And around that time I was working for a company called, uh, Vertical Measures out in Phoenix. And it is, uh, was owned, it was recently sold, um, was owned by a, a marketing genius named Arnie Ken. And uh, I took a job there when we moved to Phoenix years before that and was working in content marketing and started out as a content writer and then kind of moved into content strategy and really started getting interested in how content marketing worked as a whole. And uh, so when we decided we were moving to Florida because nobody wants to live in Phoenix forever, <laughs> uh, I decided to start my own company and called Arnie and said, I'm, I'm doing this thing. Will you mentor me? And he very graciously said, I will. And so I started the company and um, I actually started when I started it, I filed the, all the paperwork and everything. It was called simply content marketing and it was all done very quickly. I had to design the logo. Everything was done in haste, trying to get everything out and, and ready. And um, about a month after I did all that, I realized I didn't want that to be what it was called. I didn't want that to be the sole focus because I wanted it to be a fluid and transitional business that one day could turn into something else if I wanted it to and still retain the name and, and the brand that I'd built. Um, so what is your back? Like, do you have a degree in marketing or writing or what's I have know? a degree in journalism and okay. I have a degree in theater. And oh. so, yeah. And so those kind of combined along the way to create um, a love and passion for production. And uh, a lot of what we do with our clients is video production. And so it has moved more and more towards being a content house versus a marketing company, which is what I wanted all along. And uh, so we we do probably 75% of our business now is is video production and um, storyteller strategy. Is that how it started? Because, you know, in this, the video movement if you will has really kind of taken off within the last few years yeah maybe five years ago it was kind of around but not as much as it is necessary now so yeah. when it you started was it much more writing content and pictures um it was yeah it was a lot more uh traditional content marketing before content really took the took the swing towards video um i lived out in los angeles for seven years that's actually where i went to school and got my theater degree and worked in the film and television industry on both sides of the camera for years. And so um, I had a love for it. And there was a, a real lack of that kind of focus in that area of Florida where I moved to. So it was um, the company definitely did start out as more writing focus. We we're doing a lot of blog posts. We we're doing a lot of social media. Um, and then now of course, it's moved more towards video as the as the industry has moved more towards video. I um, asked an intern a month or so ago how he got his news, and he said YouTube. And it blew my mind that YouTube, to me, is like, 
kids unwrapping videos right. that this is where <laughs> this is where the twenty somethings are going yeah. for their their news yeah. sources. Yeah. Is, and that video aspect is just so huge. Yeah. Um, so you, 2014, you moved to Florida. Mm-hmm. What, so now we're in 2019. Yep. When did you get back to Cookville then? Um, two months ago, three okay. months ago. Um, so have you found that being in this rural area has limited you at all or? Um, most of my clients came with me because it is digital marketing. You can do it anywhere, which is another reason that I was really interested in starting this kind of business. Cause I did not want to be, I never wanted to sit at a desk again. That I didn't want to sit at. Yeah, in a cubicle with your... In a cube. I didn't ever wanted to sit in a, in a radio um, <laughs> recording studio. No. Um, I, n- I never wanted to have to be anywhere at a certain time again that was not on my schedule. Yeah. And when we... We were in Florida for a couple of years and my husband got a promotion that required us to move back to Phoenix. And uh, so we went. And um, right before that happened, we found out we were pregnant with our first son and uh, we were in Phoenix for a couple of years, and then we found out we were having our second son, and so it was back to Florida, um, or it was back to Tennessee, just because I think you get to a point where you realize you can't do it alone. It's really hard, even as a strong, independent woman that thinks you can do everything, and you can hire every nanny and every piece of help that you can get, but you still want to be close to friends and family, and, and we really wanted to... Both my husband and I grew up here in Cookville, and so we both wanted our boys to grow up like we did, um, not as city slickers, but instead as uh, little boys that build forts and get dirty and play football. Play in the creek. and Play in the creek and, you yeah. know, get in trouble for drag racing and all the things that we used to Go do. Go cow tipping? Is that a thing that people do around You know, there? that's something that a northerner would say. <laughs> no, we I have never tipped big. a cow. But, we you know, there's there's been some hay bale jumping. I won't lie. We've done some redneck things before that are very distinctly southern, but I don't think I've ever tipped a I've never tipped a cow. So let's touch base on this motherhood aspect of things. So you were starting a company in 2014. Mm-hmm. And what year was your first son born? Oh, I should know this off the top of my head. He was born in 2018. Okay. January 12th. So, you know, you have three, four years into a business. Mm-hmm. So you've gotten, you, you know, kind of your feet wet and you're making some headway, I'm sure. Yeah. And then you enter motherhood. Yeah. So tell me about that experience. Well, obviously it changes everything. And um, I feel extremely fortunate that I have a business that allows me to be with my, be with my son and, and eventually be with the second son too. When he comes along, there are, I, there are pictures of my first son, his name is Wilder. And uh, there are pictures of me sitting at my computer, sitting at my laptop with Wilder in a baby sling when he was maybe maybe a week old um, and I'm just returning emails like yeah. trying to catch up from that week out of, of being in the hospital. Um, but it was, it was a great experience. I had very, um, I don't want to say understanding clients because all of my clients are very good people. I, that's, that's one thing that I refuse to do is work with people that I don't want to work with. Life is short. Um, but during that time, there was a lot of flexibility and I had a great, I have a great team that picked up a lot of the slack there. Um, every, every person on my team is a woman, uh, except for some of the crew. Those are men. So it's truly powered by her. <laughs> it is truly powered by her. And it, the funny thing is, is during that time, uh, my, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having pregnancy brain right now too. And I, I forget words, but, uh, my, my chief editor, my right hand she's been with me since the beginning her name is amy delcam she was pregnant during that time as well and then uh someone that we kind of had on as a temporary writer and content creator during that time was also pregnant so i ordered these little onesies that said i'm a great story and Uh, all the babies had them they were all born within months of each other it was a time that should have been extremely chaotic but i think that there's something inside a woman that when you are going through the fire, you know, you keep going and sometimes it makes you work harder and want it more. And that support system too. And the support system. For We're going to sure. dive back into that in just a second. You're listening to Powered by Her in the Hints and Oakley Podcast Center. 
This is Tiffany Anton, and I have Laura Holloway with the Storyteller Agency today. And we are kind of discussing motherhood and the work in the work environment. And so um, tell me a little bit about this, you know, holding a one a, a one week old baby and returning emails. I think sometimes that guilt and judgment of others is really tough. But yet um, I think we all as mothers need to do what's best for us. And sure. if that makes you feel whole is to have your baby on you and return emails and that's that that's who you are as a complete person i think that's fine and i think if if it if doing nothing else besides sitting with your baby and doing nothing but looking at them makes you feel whole then that's fine absolutely and so did you have any situations where you had pressures from other people thinking oh you're not you're not you're going to sell your company or or things like that. Sure. Yeah, I had a lot of people that asked me, "So are you going to take a lot of time off work? So you're going to be home with the baby?" And I said, "I'm not going to take time off work, but I am going to be home with the baby." And they're like, "How are you going to do that?" And I'm like, "Look, I want my son to grow up and know that he has a mom that really can do it all. Like I want him to see me and when he sees me, I want him to see this invisible superhero cape where you can do it all. But then there's times too where you have to admit you have to take care of yourself. You have to take time for yourself. Uh, well, but but taking care of yourself and taking time for yourself can be working. Sure. If that's what makes you feel fulfilled, sure. that's okay. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, it does, it, it would keep me sane sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, having a having an infant is hard. And again, super lucky with this one. I, I know that the second baby, we're going to be cursed. He's going to have <laughs> colic and he's going to be up all night. Wilder was sleeping through the night after three or four months. He was just content to hang out with me. I had me. like a, a couple weeks that she was sleeping through the night, my first one. And it was great. And yeah. he slept through it. Mm -hmm. um, but he uh, he was and is an extremely go with the flow, calm kind of baby. And um, I just found ways to start incorporating him into what I was doing. Mm -hmm. uh, he started appearing in our social media posts. He started uh, there. There's actually some other footage we had several big video projects that were going out um, a couple months after he was born. And I'm there behind the camera with in the director's chair with him strapped to me. He's mm -hmm. sleeping on the set while we kept going. And I think that that's something that one day he'll see and, and think is kind of cool. Um, and I'm glad, again, that I had the opportunity to have that flexibility. But I have mom friends that are – that completely quit their jobs. They wanted to be stay at home moms. I have other mom friends that went back to work five days a week, 40 hours a week plus, And they've got nannies that come in and are hanging out with the baby. You do what you have to do. And there's, there's no right or wrong. There's no correct path. It is what you have to do for yourself. What's best for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What and, makes you the best mom. I, I think and that not all judging each other. Yeah. I think that's one of the hardest things is not judging each other, not being jealous of each other, of, of, the choices that other people are allowed to make um, and just supporting whatever it is, because no matter what it is, it's hard, mm -hmm. um, but it's the right thing for you. And you mm -hmm. have to do what you have to do for you and for your family or for your lack of family. I have other girlfriends that are my age. I'm, I'm 35 years old. I can say that I'm, I'm <laughs> proud of that. Um, I have other girlfriends my age that are not, their kids aren't even on the radar yet. Yeah. Like they're full force full steam ahead in their careers or whatever they're doing. And that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're, especially in the South, I think there's a big pressure on women to have kids, have the family, settle down, sit over there and be quiet and right. do the mom thing. And, and I think you can do, I, I think you can do it, it all, what all looks like for you, whatever it is, whether it's full-time motherhood, full-time career, full Whatever it is, as women, we just need to support other women. Sure. So, let's get back to your business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I could talk about this all day. I really tangent, could. But um, so, what strengths do you think that you have that contributed to your success of being a business owner? Um, I can talk to just about anybody. I think that what really helped me in the beginning is I went to every single chamber event. I went to every single business after hours. I went to anything and everything that I could. I passed up business cards. I had swag. I was talking to people, shaking hands, uh, kissing babies, <laughs> kissing babies. I was doing that. No, but uh, not afraid to really sit down and have a conversation with anybody. And something else about me that is, has really helped this business is I am genuinely interested in hearing people's stories. I love to hear people's stories. Um, we went, we did a lot of really 
I use the golden we. I think you get used to when you own a business, you start, you use the golden we. I said we for... Not everyone. And that is a huge sign of a, a, a business owner is that heart to say we as opposed to I. Yeah. Um, because it, it does really mean that you you feel like everybody's on the same level as you. Yeah. And that's a huge sign of a compassionate business owner and somebody that you really want to work for. Yeah, oh, that's that's good to know. I think in the beginning, too, I think you say we because it makes you sound like you're a bigger business than you are. <laughs> yeah. And in reality, it's you sitting at home on your laptop at two o'clock in the morning designing your own logo. Doing um, your logo, doing the content doing writing. Everything. You, know, you, you do it all. Doing your QuickBooks. You, yes. You're doing the QuickBooks, doing it all. Yes. Uh, and eventually you do get to a place where we is a, is a, is a logical, realistic, honest Maybe there's term. one, you know, just two even of if you it's, Even time. if it's you and your dog, we. I mean, there's, uh, I, I did a lot of things in the beginning that were uh, just on the creative side. Uh, I had gotten a new, I would gotten a new piece of equipment that I wanted to test out. We, at the time we had four dogs and I started shooting this little weird series called Office Dogs where we, uh, gave the dogs voices and all this stuff. And then we just started kind of putting it out there. And um, I didn't really expect anything to come of it, but I would be at a chamber event or something. They'd be like, Oh, office dogs. I'm like, <laughs> oh, you've seen that. that so was... did you really start local at first? And then absolutely. So you have clients where now located um, Boston, California, Phoenix, Florida, Tennessee. So all, o- all over all the over. country. Yeah. All over. Um, so what, tell me about the first time that you got a client that wasn't, <laughs> you know, in your 50 mile radius. Yeah. How did uh, you find, how'd they find you? Uh, I think again, I've been extremely fortunate to work with people that have gone on and worked at other places where the, um, word of mouth experience ex- that they had with you, right. Experiences happened. Uh, wellness pet food out of Boston is a national brand and we've been doing blog posts for them for four years. They were a client that came on pretty quickly in the beginning because I had a friend that went and worked there and she called me and she was like, Hey, we're looking for blog writers. And then that kind of spiraled into this other thing that kind of grew into them being a a regular client. So, so the day you, you know, you, they call and your boss is calling you and they say, um, you know, we want you to write a blog. What's your reaction that day? Um, I think it was just kind of like, Hell yeah. I mean, yes, <laughs> yeah. We've, we've done this thing. Yeah. Um, something that I learned very early on and, and is a, a big component of what Arnie Ken preaches with content marketing is the importance of blogs and the importance of having a blog presence on your website. And it's not because people are reading it because they are kind of sometimes, but it's because the search engines are reading it. And the science behind that and why it works. And I could totally geek out on you about this for like me, 20 minutes. Give me like a 30 second synopsis for our listeners on why blog posting is so important. The more content that you have on your website, the higher you're going to rank in search engines. When Joe Brown gets online to search for something, if he searches for something that you're writing about or you've got the right keywords in your blog, he's going to find you. We appear on page one of Google for so many search terms now because I started blogging. I made it a point to blog at least once a week when we started the company five years ago. And so now I do get calls from random people all over the world even. I, we had a call the other day from um, a college group in Switzerland that wanted to quote me for an article they're writing for their thesis about storyteller marketing. I was like, oh my God, we're in Switzerland, <laughs> um, which was kind of cool. Did you ask them if they needed to come and do a one a face-to-face? <laughs> like, I was like, so you're going to fly me out there. Yeah. We're going to do this interview in person. That'd be great. <laughs> Um, no, but we do, we, I, I get calls from people all over the country now wanting to talk about storyteller marketing. Well, the other thing with blogging, I think it's a, a fairly easy way to get your website, get action on your website. So you're, yeah. you're putting fresh stuff out there yes. every single week or every other week yes. or whatever. So, um, Google's like, okay, there's activity. This isn't a dead site that's yes. out there. Yeah. Um, this is something that's live and right. you know, it's kind of like a rundown house that you drive past four times a mm-hmm. day. And, and then all never... of a sudden there's fresh flowers in the window. Yeah. And you're or... like, oh, there's something there. Yeah. And so let me pay attention to this. And yeah. So... And Google's there, there's their bots, their spiders, the crawlers, whatever you want to call them. They're constantly crawling their web for new content. Mm -hmm. And if they come to your website and there's no new content, they may leave and not come back for a month. If you could give our listeners one piece of advice for their business, Mm -hmm. marketing wise, Mm -hmm. what, what's the one thing that they can't go without doing? Uh, You absolutely have to be blogging and you need to be doing it at least once a week. Even if it's just one blog post, put five or 600 words on your website at least once a week. 
How's your, what are your thoughts on email marketing? I think it's necessary uh, to a point. It's not necessary for every single business. Okay. I think that a lot of people make the mistake when they're planning their marketing, they feel like, oh, I need a LinkedIn. Oh, I need a Facebook. Oh, I need an Instagram, blah, 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 blah. Pick the two or three that really make sense for your company and put all your energy into that because well, otherwise you're just doing this half cocked right. job. You're, you're you're spread out so thin. And I think what people think so much, you know, to me, okay, if you have your marketing to senior citizens, mm -hmm. They're not on LinkedIn, so right. it's okay to leave LinkedIn off the. They're probably uh, not on Instagram, right? Yes, yeah. they're not doing Snapchat, right? So, um, really thinking about who your customer is mm -hmm. is so important in, in that aspect of telling your story. Yeah, you know, if I'm going to tell a story, it's going to look a little different to my nine year old as opposed to my best friend who's thirty six. Sure, like you know, and so that's when you put out that content. Sure. That it, it's very important to to have a picture in your mind of what that looks like. And thinking outside of the box, a, a lot of people, uh, clients will come to me, a p potential clients will come to me and they'll say, we, we want to, we want to get creative. We want to tell our story, but we're boring. We don't think we have a story to tell. <laughs> um, you know, it'll be a, uh, it'll be a law firm or something. And they'll say, well, all we do is handle this. And they'll say, well, who are the people that work for you? How did you start your business? It's, I, I say this a lot. And, and that's another great thing about the blogging is it's brought me a lot of, people that want me to come and speak. I speak a lot at conferences about the importance of story and storyteller marketing. And one thing that I say a lot is the the phrase, it's not, it's not personal, it's business. That's bull. That doesn't exist anymore. It's all personal now. And yeah. people want to do business with people that they feel they can have a personal connection with. Well, and we at the Biz Foundry, we try and tell people when you pitch an idea, a business idea. So this is for all entrepreneurs out there. You need to tell your story. Nobody wants to say, oh, well, I want to start a coffee shop and I'm going to sell coffee to people. Well, people people aren't going to invest in that. But if you say this is why and and um I I've been working with a lady in Gainesboro and she she wants to call it Bees Coffee because the bees control everything everything comes from the bees and she's like we're going to revive Gainesboro based on Bees Coffee and it, it just that heart and that passion she puts that into a pitch. It's hard to ignore that. Mm -hmm. But a coffee shop that just serves coffee right. is not really that. It right. doesn't get the heart. Well, it's already being done. Right. So yeah. that pitch, even even in the pitch that people do for their businesses, that story that they're telling. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get um, back to um, some troubling times in your career in a second. Ooh, okay. You're listening to Powered by Her in the Hints and Oakley Podcast Center. I'm Tiffany Anton. We have Laura Holloway with the Storyteller Agency and... I want you to think about a time that maybe in your career path um, you've had some struggles or maybe um, maybe you've had to make some tough decisions. Yeah. Um, and so let us know what 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 comes to mind. Um, there's one big one that comes to mind and I'm not going to go into details, details about this. And we didn't even talk about this before. This isn't what you think I'm going <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> Throw me curveballs. Um Several years ago, I was approached by a company in, uh, they're based out of Alabama, but uh, they approached me about coming and teaching their their leadership team, um, helping them to tell their story, to find their brand, to do a workshop for them. So I went and did the workshop. It was great. Met the founder, headed off with her. It was great. Flash forward a year, they were hiring for uh, a director position in the company, and they contacted me about possibly taking that role. Are you interested? No, I'm not interested. I have my own company. I don't want to work for anybody. It's great. Well, here's the salary. Oh, maybe I'm interested. Let me think <laughs> about that for a second. Uh, long story short, I ended up putting my company under the care of my project manager, who's a fantastic person. She's a, a very good friend of mine. I trusted her completely. Um, and I went and, and, wor and, and started working for this person. And um, after two weeks, I knew I'd made a horrible mistake. Mm. And we were there. We had moved. Uh, we had packed up. We had we had rented our house out in Florida. We had moved to Alabama. I was traveling around the country with this person doing um, some really cool stuff. But it was a uh, it was not a good situation emotionally. It was not a good situation on my self esteem. It was horrible, and I knew yeah. it. I knew it pretty quickly. Two weeks in. Two weeks in. Uh, stuck it out for three months. And then said, this is enough. And uh, our house was rented in Florida. We couldn't get back in there. Um, went back to my project manager friend. I said, I'm coming back in. You know, this is, but I'm going to take some time off. 
my husband and I decided we were going to go completely off the grid for a minute. I mean, the, this, the, the, this situation that I, that I ended up doing, it, it was a, it was a, it was mind games. It was, it was not a good situation. And uh, so I said, let's just get off the grid for a minute. So we have some property up here at Center Hill Lake. We have an old Airstream trailer. Mm. We said, we're going to move to the Airstream for a couple months. We're going to get out of here. We're not really going to talk about anything. Luckily, he could work from home. He was he was doing his thing from home. And uh, we had been in the Airstream for a couple of weeks, and I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm back to Florida. So that was a, a time when I realized I – there were a lot of lessons learned from that. There were some really great things that came out of it. I made some really great connections. I learned some things about myself and business, but the main thing I learned is that I never want to work for anybody else ever again. Mm -hmm. Never. Yeah. So that was a crazy situation. And that's, and that's good. I mean, sometimes it's good to, I think people get stuck in a career and they think, you know, that they are, they're stuck and they can't go anywhere. And they're like, well, I moved my family here and I, I, you know, but really listening to yourself and knowing, okay, the money is not the be all and end yeah, all. Yeah. And I, I think that that, that was the, the problem is that I saw these dollar signs and I saw the opportunity there. It seemed like a really incredible opportunity. This, this woman was very connected with uh, some people that I was very interested in, in working with and, and getting closer with. And uh, it's just, you have to, you have to be true to yourself. Yeah. And I, I felt like I made a lot of concessions with my career in that moment that I will never do again. Yeah. So that, and then, um, that's really the only unpleasant thing that's ever really happened to me in my career. Yeah. Um, we, so we, we talked a little bit about, so you had a side business at some point. Yeah. We, we started a, um, my friend Jordan and I started and, and my friend Aaron, uh, there was three of us involved in the very beginning. It actually started over a girl's poker night where, we all had our own marketing businesses, PR companies, and uh, there were seven or eight of us that would get together every week and play poker at my house. And uh, I was like, you know, we should start a we should start a collaborative. We should start this this thing that supports women business owners, and um, and we should call it She Wolf. And we had all these really great ideas, and we we had all these meetings, and we sat down and we planned this thing, and then it got going. And Aaron ended up stepping away kind of early on. And uh, Jordan and I pushed this thing forward for about a year. And that was about the time that I found out that I was having our first son. And it just turned out to not be a time when I could focus on it as much as she could. And I think also sometimes you get into something and you realize that your visions maybe are a little bit different for something. And in order to save a friendship or to be able to walk away with the thing moving forward and being successful for one of you, the other one needs to step away. So how hard was it? Cause you know, you have this passion to help people. Sure. You have a passion for women business owners. And so you, you have a passion for the she wolf, she wolf. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't feeling right and it wasn't going quite the way. And you want to save a friendship. How difficult was it to make the decision to step away and say, okay, I'm not going to, we Jordan and I had a lot of of really good conversations about it. Uh, it was never a fight. It was never a, a drama. It was more of a girl. I support you, and I'm not in the same place you are right now. I'm about to have a kid. My other business is going really well. I can't. I cannot focus on this thing like you like you can right mm-hmm. now. And uh, I said, just buy me out. Just buy me out. I'll always be a founder. I'll always be a member. I'll always support this thing uh, from from the sidelines and, and maybe jump back into it one day when it when it makes sense. But right now, I'm out. And I say that She Wolf. She Wolf. Co? Is that what it is? Yep. She Wolf Co. And is it, um, do they do women's conferences? Uh, they do. I think that she has, she started doing some women's conferences with it there. Uh, she, she has her own business as well. That's, that's the thing about she Wolf is it's, it's all, it's inv- invitation. It's people that are brought into it because they have a, a successful business that they're already running. And it really is a support group for, for women business owners, which is a little, I mean, there is something different about a women business owner than just the whole the whole rest of it, the, the support that, that we need a little bit more than others is, yeah. is, is real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we worked together for a long time. We would bring different clients into the fold. She Wolf had its own clients. Um, and then I think eventually it, it started to, to move more towards being its own 
its own business. And that's kind of when I, I was, I was done. I, I couldn't, I could not help run another business yeah. and have spread mine be successful. Yeah, yeah. I felt spread too thin and she completely understood that. And I think that's a sign, a huge sign of maturity and, and, and kind of age is knowing, okay, this is my limit. Yeah. This is what I can do. And I want to be successful in, in, in this. I've had a friend of mine who owns a business and has said, um, this is my baby. And I don't know that I would necessarily want to have children because I think one or the other would slide. Yeah. And it's like to know your limits is so huge. Yeah. And that's such a huge sign of maturity. Yeah. And she and I are still, we kind of have our own little private she wolf in that she always calls me for business <laughs> advice. And I always call her when we do joke. howl and stuff like, <laughs> do you, do you, <laughs> do you, uh, <laughs> no, but um, we, when she moved to Montana, I did the cross country road trip with her. We actually stayed at this place called wolf camp along the way where <laughs> they have like live wolves that live on the campground. It was very disappointing. They were in a cage. We, we expected them to be like running through the camp. Um, but uh she and I always joke that you can always tell a really good friend by someone that you can FaceTime call without sending them a text message first to tell them that you're going to do it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know what yes, I mean? Yes. Like I get mad if somebody FaceTimes me now or sometimes even if they call me now without texting me first, I'm like, uh, hello, I didn't know this was happening. We were just saying that I had a conversation with somebody this morning that he had texted me and I was driving and it was a business call. And I thought, can I just call him back right now? Because, but nobody does that anymore. You can't just pick up the phone and call. And I'm like, but I'm driving. So this is I what know. I need to do. I so hands free Tennessee. We got to, you know, follow the laws yeah. now. So um, we're going to get back to a little more upbeat, positive in a second. You're listening to Powered by Her in the Hints and Oakley Podcast Center. We have Laura Holloway with the Storyteller Agency, and we're going to find out what's next for the Storyteller Agency. Where are you going? What you doing? Gosh, it has it has evolved so much over the years and and where it's going and and what I've always wanted it to be. It's it's becoming more and more of a content creation house, which is what I always wanted it to do. Uh, There's some really cool things happening for Storyteller, and I can't really talk about a lot of them. I'm sorry. There's some other. What's our timeline? Where are we? When are we waiting for this anticipation of newness? Um, Within the next two years. Okay. um, There is there are some other business ventures that are connected with the Storyteller Agency that are happening, that are kind of branching out. Um, The whole and and a lot of that goes back to with the Storyteller when I started the company. Uh, and I had called, you know, it was originally named simply content marketing because I was like, I'm going to focus on content marketing and whatever. And then I renamed it storyteller and and completely rebranded it. And I did that so that it could become what it's going to become. And it is becoming that I'm very excited for it. Uh, there is, um, an opportunity. There's a story tell the storyteller aspect of it is taking center stage more, way more over more so over than, than marketing. Yeah. Um, and actually one of our, one of our, uh, slogans is marketing sucks. <laughs> it's actually on some of the business cards. We say if, if all you're doing is marketing, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Stop marketing, start storytelling. You know, there's, I, I like to say a lot with, um, the interns that I've worked with, we need to teach people. Mm-hmm. And I use, I have a background in teaching. I used to teach high school. So mine's not necessarily, I feel like I'm not as creative to mm-hmm. t- tell a story, but I'm like, okay, we're going to teach these people, which is around the same lines, yeah. but um, teach people why they need to your services or your product or whatever we're teaching them. So yeah. same kind of thing. The to, to get back to your question of kind of where things are going, let me go back to how it all started and you can kind of see it in our logo but my family owned, um, started and owned a bookstore here in Cookville, and I worked in it growing up. It was called Bookworks, and most people remember it very fondly. It was uh, one of the last great mom and pop bookshops before you order everything from Amazon Prime, and and uh, our logo is actually a book. You can see that it's a it's a book. It's also an air plant, which is uh, a plant that that draws its its nutrients from the environment that it's around like any good storyteller would. And let's just say that where we're going is, is more towards um, the storytelling aspect that would include publishing Mm -hmm. that would include books and traditional storytelling. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that is exciting and we can't wait to hear more about that. Thank you. Um, So how can people follow you, contact you, find you? 
I, I found you on LinkedIn and you're one of these like official, t- make sure you, we know, I know you, you're like famous that you can, not anybody can just contact you on LinkedIn. Oh, I didn't even know that I had that it, setting. It's, <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have an Instagram page. We do Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, and it's all LinkedIn. the storyteller agency. Uh, I think Twitter is the only one that's different just because it's got a character limit. It's storyteller okay. agency. Okay. Uh, best way to contact us is through our website, storytelleragency.com. You can email me anytime, Laura at storytelleragency.com. Um, just don't pick up the phone and call me randomly. because <laughs> Definitely don't <laughs> FaceTime you. Don't <laughs> FaceTime me without warning because I've, you know, I'm, I'm also one of those people that has like the little sticker over my video camera on my computer on the off chance that I accidentally video call somebody when I'm not ready, when I'm not camera ready. That's right. So. That's right. Well, thank you for coming on today. Thank you so it was much great for to hear your me. story and um, best of luck with the new baby. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.